Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory. Great week this week. Been really pushing on heavily with the intruder. Um, it might even be finished by next week. Uh, all the sub assemblies are done, so we've done all things like masking up, just working on the gear now. Everything else is done. Uh, we talk about um, quite in depth sanding, which is something I think will be you know really valuable to uh, non members as well as members as well. So we're going to have a look at that a little bit later on in the show. But really, as you can see, it's starting to come together now. Uh, I had a few fit issues, which were totally my own fault. Still can't blame the kit. Absolutely stunning, loving it every single minute of that. But anyway, so we'll talk about that one later, but that's what I've been doing. So I haven't had a time to get on with the ship. And as you can probably see here on the wide angle camera, um, I, although I have a quite a large studio and I'm pretty blessed <laughs> to have all this room, um, I am filling it up very, very rapidly. And when you're doing 132 second builds like this, it takes up so much room and things with the spray bay and everything else like that. So what I'm gonna do, I think is push totally on with the intruder just for the minute okay then we're going to come back and push solely on with the Iwo Jima because that deserves a lot and there's a lot of photo etch work to go on with that one now just about starting the superstructure on the top for the island and everything else like that and we can really push forward through it so it's not that far off okay a lot of the work's all done the electrics is all done for it and everything else now but literally you can just see it pointing over there um, it, it's just one of those things it's space and I haven't got enough of it although I am in this huge thing and everything else but trust me when you get the room you'll soon fill it up with your crap trust me I've done that no problem at all now I need twice this room so my plan is really next week is to push totally on with the intruder I want it almost out of the way okay certainly to the point where everything's cleared up so I can get the Iwo Jima in get cracking with that because I really want to get on with the Star Destroyer because obviously that's part of our silver screen sig uh, and lots of you have completing and getting near completion things like that so I really want to get on with that one because I don't want to miss the deadline for the end then we can get on with the hind and all the other things which we'll be talking about a little bit later on so anyway, first I have to mention uh, the videos that are up. Now, all the ones from the last two years, which go all the way to the Sea Fire, okay, which I think was about two years ago, and they are all now on the YouTube format, which basically means they are anywhere between 480 and 720 uploads at eight megabytes um, per second. Um, uh, and that's how it works, it's eight kilobytes, okay, so that's 8,000, so that's technically eight megabits uh, per second up there. Bit of confusion about this, this is me waffling on last week, getting slightly ahead of myself. I was saying about the new double HD version. Well, what that actually is, is I can't do that yet because if I was to upload in that new format, it would take me days. Where at the moment it takes me a day to get that uploaded into it, into double HD, will actually take four days okay but hopefully my new fiber optic will be in within the next few weeks and then that way uh, obviously we have a good line then and we can upload at that new rate that way you can get it now don't panic some of you are saying oh that's massive files I'll never be able to download it because obviously you now we're using YouTube you can just click on which version you want of it and you can just watch it which is something I've been on about for absolute years trying to get our old host co company to come up with uh, and although it was there and it sort of worked and it tried to do it itself it was never like YouTube does it so what I will do is they will then be increased so at the moment everything you watch now is in 720 by uh, technically 8 megabit, uh, megabits per second okay audio, audio and visual rate when we go up again we're going to then step it up to 1080 uh, by 12 mega okay and then what we're going to do we're going to double it up again and we're actually going to go up to 24 megabits a second which is technically double hd and that's how it works so then you will be in a situation if you wanted to is to watch it on very large screens and have no problem at all that's if you want me in very large screens but you know what i mean so hopefully it is but i need it to be where everybody can still watch it and certainly for me uploading it as i said this show takes me 25 hours to upload it yep that is it, okay? Hopefully when the new system goes in and everything else like that, it should come right down just to a few hours and then that way I can upload at my leisure, which means I can upload very large files straight away. But at the moment, because we're obviously we're uploading the old stuff up on the server as well, I can't allow it just to go on for four days to upload something because otherwise we would never get any work done. Obviously I try and bring you at least um, two hours of footage every week is my sort of goal to do. Uh, like last week, uh, we only managed to get an hour up because we had a little new show. This this week we've got two parts of the intruder up okay plus the new show again so we're getting on for two hours so that takes me quite a bit of time to obviously upload um, and then obviously with all the uploads that are going up which is still going up on another computer 24 hours a day seven days a week that's all it's doing is uploading okay you have to imagine we have 480 videos to upload that doesn't include all the new old new shows which we will probably not bother trying to upload those again because they're very old and pretty much out of date and everything else 
So we had loads of things going on this week. Um, I asked up some feelers on how you felt we were doing, uh, what you would like to see and everything else. I've taken all of those on board and I've been chewing them over uh, the last few days really, having a bit of a thing to myself, to be honest. Um, I haven't involved anybody else in the thought process, so apologies team. Uh, they only got the memo on this yesterday. Uh, but really I've come up with some ideas which I would like to implement obviously into the new Flory models of how we're gonna go forward in 2014. First of all, the links problem that we have on the site. Now, a lot of this was a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. We had a few attacks on the forum, uh, which took its toll, to be honest. Um, what you don't notice is there's a lot of running around behind the scenes when this happens. Um, every time it's happened, it's been traced back to a link, which is then has a bot which attacks the forum. And that's, you know, you guys who are on other forums, you know how a nightmare it can be when the forum collapses and trying to get it back up and everything else. It's something I avoid like the play, because obviously if I have to sit down for a couple of days put the forum back together I don't do any filming I don't get any work done you guys have nothing to see okay um, so what it is I've had a word with our host company and everything else we've sort of beefed up our security quite heavily so we are going to be allowing links as of now back into the main forum okay now full details are going to be about this on the forum as well okay in the announcements area so have a look through as I make my way through the list here so basically any links can go back up there now you can just do it as a hyperlink to clickable or you can put it down as a full URL don't worry about dot and all the rest of it just but it cut and paste them straight into the forum no problem at all there is going to be some rules to this basically spamming which is one thing that absolutely does my head in so consequently if you're linking to something that's blatantly advertising then um, first of all you're going to get a warning then you're going to get basically a 14 day ban and then after that you're going to be kicked out simple as that I know it's very harsh but we need to get some rules down firmly about this because in the past we've had people come along who've used this for blatant advertising okay and quite frankly you know all right we don't pay for it but I know lots of people who do who go out and pay for advertising and everything else and I'm not going to allow somebody to use our 4,000 members as a free advert okay next up YouTube and things like that um, again we've had a bit of trouble not just us this was YouTube as well because many times YouTube now is having a clamp down massively on copyright and everything else and myself as a, a user we've got over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube now uh, every video we uploaded is goes through a special new process which basically means if somebody tries to copy it or anything else they get done which is great from our point of view um, but what this is gonna prove I think a little bit problematic is people People who've got obviously copyright material on your YouTube things um, they're gonna get yanked uh, and basically just pulled straight away uh, and YouTube seems to be having a real good or Google clamping down on this quite a lot okay so we are allowing YouTube back up onto the main site as well so feel free to embed videos that's all enabled again back onto the main forum you can put up your own work obviously but again spamming does come in so we're not having any links no little post-it notes on there saying about another forum or website or generally because both you know that's just you breaking the rules that you'll see up in the announcements area again but certainly if you've got some of your work up there that you want to show in video form and everything else then obviously feel free to do that as well onto the forum there is going to be dedicated areas for all of these things on the site so there will be a YouTube area uh, and things like that general chat is another one this causes us no end of problems and I know we've lost some members and obviously the members who have left us you are more than welcome back at any time but we have thrown a few people out to be honest because we've had racial we've had religious we've had political things and they just turn into a massive fight on the forum and this is not what Flory models is about we're a modeling site so what it does it just it was easier for us to close down general chat and keep us purely as a modeling site okay but we understand there is scenarios where you want to tell members about news that's going on news that's important to you which isn't modeling related okay and I get that more than anybody else because there's lots of things I'd like to talk about okay so obviously what we're going to do now is open up chat again but again please read the announcements area there are going to be some rules down in there about what can and can't be said certainly we don't want any of the trouble we've had before because we've only actually lost I think it's around about six people in the entire 12 years of flooring models that's been going now okay that have actually left us through being thrown out okay every single one of those was tracked back to those forums you know in actual threads in forums on general chat where they've turned political turn religious and then you know we're not having any bullying or anything else so same thing again you'll basically get a warning you'll be suspended for 14 days and then you'll be kicked out it's as simple as that okay um we've got a couple of things i'd like to get you guys involved with with flooring models first of all your man caves 
So what I'm envisioning here is every week we're going to look at one of your man caves, okay? So this is a members thing, okay, only, so sorry for non-members, you can't actually submit. But basically submit a video to me, either give me the link from YouTube or you can send it to me direct, all right? What I'm hoping you'll do is something along the lines of this. You'll do a quick two minute thing to camera just to explain your name. So I would say, hi, I'm Phil Flory, I'm from England, uh, from the southwest of England in Devon. I mainly model aircraft, armor, and anything else you lot forced me to do, okay? And I'm gonna take you around my man cave. And then you'll just do a walk around like we've all done before, everybody's done it, with a camera and it's show your members your man cave. Because I know a lot of you have spent a lot of money on your man cave recently and got some great setups. Uh, and I think it'd be really nice for you, obviously the members to show other members, but also the worldwide public as well. Because don't forget, we've seen about 10,000 people a week doing this, okay? Um, you can show off your work. So what you want you to do is read the little area that will be in the forum this week um, and it will talk about what I need from you, just some basic details, everything else like it. The formats you can do it in, those types of things would be really helpful uh, and just some guidelines. So again, we're not going to have any spamming, so no bloody great adverts and everything for everybody else, all right? and we can do things like that. So that is the point to it. So some new changes, there's a few others coming down the line again, okay, which we'll talk about uh, as soon as we move forward and everything else. But certainly quite exciting times. I'd like us to sort of get back to being more of the family orientated and everything else like that in the forum. And hopefully these will help everybody out and uh, get everybody moving again. So anyway, this week, as I said, been working on the intruder. Um, and one thing sort of blatantly comes into mind is this back seam, as you can see it just down here. It is a very large seam and something you need to be completely seamless with. Um, I had uh, a couple of guys around who done training with me for um, the over just before Christmas, to be honest, things like that. Um, we covered sanding with them. So here's a little recap on sanding of actually getting this totally seamless, totally smooth finish onto your models. Okay, but so, been drying overnight. Uh, really happy how it went. And to be honest, all those fears we had about it actually, you know, the wings having massive joins and things like that, pretty unfounded. By the time we got that centre section sorted out, which I think, unless you're gonna do what I did and make a hash of it underneath, you should be absolutely okay, no problems at all. Um, and it actually all joins up pretty well. We've got no massive gaps anywhere. So what I actually did last night, because they were really small, is I just went around with some filler and put it down, uh, just down in these wing roots, as you can see, really just to sort of speed things up so we're going ahead. So it's just our standard way of doing it. I just put it on to, I've got these great little guys here, um, these little spatulas, and they made a Teflon, so nothing sticks to them. You can just spread it around, put it all in, and then next up, we can do a general sanding and cleaning up. Now, if you are using a uh, perfect plastic putty, you could obviously come along with cellulose thinners and wipe it down. Trouble when you use cellulose thinners and things like that, it's sort of attacking everything around it. So you're attacking the plastic, you're attacking obviously the filler itself and all those areas. So what I tend to do is try and find a less uh, a corrosive way of doing it. Now don't get me wrong, if you're doing things like intakes, you want something really that's gonna sort of melt it all together and everything else. But with this particular type of putty, it works best to have something not as aggressive. So basically what I've been using is airbrush cleaner. Now this airbrush cleaner here is just Vallejo standard stuff for acrylics. All I tend to do, come along, put a dollop on a cotton bud, just soak a cotton bud, okay? And then you put it down and it will eat, well not eat, but wipes off all the excess in these areas. Now this is quite lumpy and bumpy. The thing you'll notice is this will soak it up, but what it won't do is eat its way into the plastic like if you were using our usual technique of doing it, of going around with you know, a cellulose thinners. The great thing about doing it this way as well, you don't cause any damage whatsoever to areas like down here in this, this join and things like that. By wiping this in, it cleans it all out. Now, if we had to get in there with sanding sticks, not only is it gonna be incredibly difficult because of it's at a right angle, but also, you know, you run the risk of making probably more damage than you started with. If you find it's not doing much, okay, just soak the area a bit, okay, and then get in there, give it a rub, but it's great for things like down in here where we've got a little bit too much going on down there. But what you want to do is not overdo it. Like there, it's getting a little bit wet, so I'm going to take some of that away. Okay, but like up in these areas here at the top, quite difficult to get those out. 
but it should just take off those areas where we want it out of the way. And remember, you're not trying to get rid of all the filler. A common mistake, I must admit, I had a gentleman um, here a few weeks ago and I was teaching things like that. And he was saying about obviously his filling. Every time he does filling, he comes back, he gets shrinkage. And I was explaining a bit about the shrinkage. Then he showed me how he did it. And I think the problem he's got is he's taking all the filler away. Okay, so when you're doing something like this, he would carry on until he couldn't see the filler. Big mistake, remember, you want to see the filler because the filler's there for a job and just filling it in. And by the time we sort of showed him about putting it down, leaving the filler, you know, and then testing it with airbrush, just put down some paint over the top, see how it looks, if it doesn't look right, carry on with another coat, things like that. By the you know, time we spoke about it, we had that down packed, but I think it is quite a common mistake where people think you have to sand all the filler away. It's a bit like when we did under here, we've still got, you can see, quite a bit of filler here. Um, it's perfectly smooth to the touch, but obviously, if you're taking all that filler out, you're gonna get a step again. So remember, filler is your friend. Don't think you're fighting it all the way. So if you've got a situation like we've got down here, and we've got, you just see a smidging of it left down there. That's good, because what we're gonna do is check all those seams and come along. So what I'm gonna do now is literally, starting off with sort of a medium file, just to take this heavy sides off at the top. We're gonna to make quite a mess, okay? So all we're doing with this pass, is taking off the chunky stuff that's sitting on the top, okay? So we're just gonna take off just the big stuff, just for a minute. Okay, now we're gonna try and avoid getting it in the cockpit, but it is gonna be quite messy. But what I'm going to do, I think, if we use a very low tack, this is that cheap um, masking tape that you can get for uh, DIY stores for doing walls and that. It's not very good, I think, really for masking windows. We've spoken about it before, if you haven't seen it, that it loses its tack very, very quickly. But what I'm gonna do is just bonk in some over the top here, because I don't want to fill up the cockpit with dust okay so this is the idea between this so we can just pop that round there and what we're going to do is just halfway protect some of the side areas can do with a bit more really okay now I'm not going right up to it I'm just trying to help protect a little bit of detail because what we're going to do is rescribe this entire back area okay but this is just going to stop any over sanding and things like that. We've got lumps and bumps and various air scoops and that to go on here yet, but we want it all nicely taken care of to start with. So that just protects our little cockpit. Because all we're doing now really is just getting rid of all the dusty, horrible jobs and things like that. So when we come in in a minute and start painting, we're not gonna be causing dust that's gonna cause grits and horrible nasties. So as I say, once we get down to almost onto plastic, like there, what we're gonna do is just switch over to a finer sponge. So if we use the black side on the sponge here, because we don't wanna cause a total flat spot, so this has got enough bite in it to sand this down. Remember, when you're sanding, let the sponge do all the work. Don't think you have to get in here and carve away at it, pushing down heavily. All you're gonna cause is uneven surface. Let the sponge run the entire length of the sanding join you're doing and finding its own level. Okay, so when you look down at it and feel it, it should be smooth and we've still got crevices and lumps and bumps down here. Obviously we need to get lower but what you should start seeing is centers of high areas popping through the filler. So for instance, we just do this area here. You can see here, we've got a little bit of a step coming across because you can see the difference in the height there, but feeling it, nice and smooth, okay? But you wanna carry on just a little bit further, get into the plastic a little bit. Okay, so we're just gonna come up. And then try and even out the area. So if you notice you've got like obviously here we're running low, but here we've still got quite a bit and I can feel the step here. We're just gonna concentrate in this area. Let's say, these are pretty good, they're self-cleaning, but every now and again, just give them a tap out, give them a rub on your jeans, just to clean them out and you should be end up something like this. Really, really nice, no problem at all, okay? So what we're gonna do, 
oxygen. That's it. And then, now, I have a confession at the top here, this is super glue. Um, it was just to hold it in place. I super glued it from the inside so it would hold. So remember, if you've got super glue in there, like here, I don't know how the camera will put it up. See a little mark? It's perfectly smooth, but it doesn't look like it is. But because the super glue is clear, it goes through. Okay, so all we're going to do, we're almost to the area. So what I'm sort of doing is we're coming in a sort of 45 degree angle. Then we're going to switch back. But always make sure your sponge is in the middle. Don't go right off the end. Otherwise, you're going to be digging it and causing steps. If it's always on the top, you should get a nice, smooth, blended out surface. So we've just got to do this middle area really here. Okay, we're going to go 45 degrees right across. You can probably see here, you've got the different areas. You can see the paint, which is the dark, whereas we put down just some acrylic paint just to have a look at the seam and see how bad it was. And now we're trying to fill in. So we're feeling very, very smooth. Okay, so what we're going to do is just switch over to the other side. Okay, this is the more softer grit, a higher grit. So it's just going to polish in but we're not trying to make a flat area. We're trying to keep it round. That's why we're using sponges now and not using a sanding stick because the sanding sticks are a little bit too coarse. Okay. And again, we're just gonna feel, can feel a little bit in there, a little bit tiny there, a little bit on this surface. So you're literally just trying to go along. Don't forget, you can wet them, okay, and use it like wet and dry. So really, it's just this center area here. Just trying to lock it down. And that's feeling very, very smooth now, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna wet the polishing sponge, okay? And just keeping it quite wet, we're just gonna polish in this entire area. We're gonna have to do a little bit of work about rescribing up here. And really, if you're using the blue side of the polisher, you'll end up with, as you can probably see down here, scratch-free plastic, okay? I've got no real joy, it's got a little bit there. But I've got a feeling that's where the bulkhead is, and I can feel the bulkhead through the top there. But the thing is, if you carry on, if we just do this lower edge and use the, the white side, that a lot of people don't think does anything on plastic, just it's the clear parts, what you'll actually do is, See how shiny that is and the camera catches it compared with the rest. It will polish it up to literally a mirror finish and it feels extremely smooth. And there we go, that's something like that. So we'll just take these outer ones off. So what you do really is take this outside and give it a, a shake. Okay, and what we're gonna do is just use a clean bit of towel. Tiny bit of airbrush cleaner on it, so it acts like a tacky cloth, okay, because this will need a very good clean up, but we can see what we've got now. And there we go, there's our finished area. Hopefully you can see it very nice. Now this in here, you might think, okay, take it out to go a little bit lower but to be honest what I'm going to do in a minute I'm going to give it a spray of acrylic paint right the way over it just to see what it's doing but what I want to do is all totally dry back so I'm going to leave it for a good couple of hours crack on with other things okay come back to it see how it is we still got to do a little bit of sanding work down the others but obviously clean your bench up get rid of this ideally you want to do it outside okay when you're doing a heavy filler job like this but it's just one of those things this model is going to be presented to the viewer 
Obviously the wing's folded up, so you're not going to see this area exactly brilliantly, but you're certainly going to see the back, and there's nothing worse than having a seam line down there because it is just staring you in the face. So it's well worth spending as much time as needed to make sure that that particular area is good. That way, when people look at it, they won't even notice that there's ever a join there. We're going to go back, we're going to re-rivet, we're going to re-scribe, obviously the panel line's back in there to make it look like it was never a join there in the first place. But I said, certain things really spend some time with center seams on big aircraft like this is a must okay if they're on the side when we've done aircraft like tomcats and that you can get away with minimal when it's on the back of it running down the spine on a flat aircraft like this you want to spend a little bit more time okay so side all taken care of and i've saved masked up the front a bit really just to stop now what i've actually done here because this spine i wanted to see exactly what we've got you might be able to see. I've actually given it a coat of Mr. Surfacer. Now this is do, 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 finding the one. Here we are. <clears throat> now what are the way I do it? This is the 1200. It's very thin anyway, and then I thin it about 50-50% with cellulose thinners. Put it through your airbrush and spray it on. If you end up with a cobwebbing effect, it means it's too thick. Okay, so just thin it, thin it, thin it, and you'll be okay. Thing with it is, start off a very light coat down, and then you can build up. As soon as you've got like a layer on, like normal painting, you can really push ahead and give it down. But the thing with using a Mr. Surface a primer instead of a standard type of primer over it is it gives you a better idea of what's going on it's got a lovely smooth finish and you can sand it very very easy and hopefully you can see cameras are going to be the best for this but although we've lost obviously a lot of this panel lining and riveting which is something we're going to take care of shortly you know we can actually see we've got a perfect finish so i'm going to leave this now for around about 24 hours before we start getting in with the re-riveting and obviously putting the panel lines back in really to see we don't get any sink marks down here because to be honest i did have a sink mark and i had to fill again hence whilst i put this down as well also using the mr surfacer because it's a lacquer based it tends to um eat slightly into the plastic a little bit gives you a better fix and a better grip so we've done that one there and we've checked all the other seams and we've gone around it and hopefully you can see it's looking really really nice so we've got no problems with any seam lines or joints or anything else and to be honest it's pretty straightforward but said nice smooth finish so okay so i hope that's a bit helped to you um obviously members you'll see the full thing to this this week there's another part as well that goes on which gets you actually to exactly where i am today i'll carry on with this tomorrow which is obviously when you're seeing this friday i record these thursday afternoon now um and what happened is is that um it will really push forward and then next week i hope to bring another two parts which will get us well into the painting phase then we're going to be looking at the weathering then we've got to bring all this together so we've got to fit all these engines we've got to do plenty more scratch working yet onto this one i want to really detail up some of these areas so Certainly for you guys, you'll be seeing this. We've done the little electronics bays, things like this. They need to be fully up weathered and everything for that nice radar to be open. That engine on the hard point and everything else, lots of wiring detail. The hard point itself has got to be detailed. So there's still plenty more to come on this particular build. But said, I'm pushing through it quite rapidly now, dedicating all my bench time to that one so we can get the Iwo Jima in here. Because unfortunately, I know I've missed two weeks of getting that one done now. But we want to get the Iwo Jima built, get that one in place, and then we can move on with the other models. So parts what are we now on eight and nine uh for the uh intruder are up on the site for you guys to watch now okay so in the forum and to be honest i have a nice screen down here with all of my laptop which tells me everything so down at the moment yeah uh, silver screen we have got what have we got completions now we've got 15 completions now for the silver screen sig uh congratulations to you guys you're doing absolutely fantastic we've got 27 entries no we haven't sorry we've got 99 entries in that one okay you got the till the 30th of april so basically you've got until may beginning of may to get that one done um, obviously as I said for me it's the Star Destroyer so I'm going to be focused totally on to doing that one um, some more of my electrics actually turned up yesterday for it which is quite nice um, so I'm hopefully going to be sort of playing with the electronics with it I'm going to do it really simply because my big focus for this one is for the painting and weathering on it going together as a doll for this is just giant resin brick okay but the detail I want to detail it up with specific weathering painting I'm really going to town with it so you're going to want to watch that one but anyway that one will start soon as these two are out of the way we spoke for so uh after that we've got the fw190 we've got the butcher bird sig going i uh, got until the 16th of march with that one uh, we had a look at it last week we've only got three completed on that but we have got 27 entries into that one so that one's going very well next up is the uh support sig this is the um support vehicles that's going to run from the 12th of january to the 4th of may that's a sig okay going through for that so so um steve's leading that one 
plenty of information about it and there is a dedicated area in the forum to that one as well so you're going to want to get in that one and have a good look around there so that's about it for this week um hopefully next week i've got some great reviews for you because i have got some stuff coming in um to do with airbrushing as well for something i'll be talking about in next week's show we're going to be um airbrushing you're not going to want to miss it so we've got something really good for coming for that one Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with a bill which I was supposed to bring you um, a couple of weeks ago, but through everything that's gone on with the run-up to Christmas, I completely over, yeah, oversaw it and forgot it until to this week. So anyway, here's Graham Taylor. This is the 125th scale Centurion Mark III. This is the build and the reveal photo. So until next week, everybody, happy modelling and take care.